Hi, Ray here. It's great to see you. Finally, I've got this YouTube channel monetized, which means that, uh, well, you've probably already um, seen an ad if you've gotten this far. And so I'm yesterday, uh, I reached my 4,000 hours of watch time, which in addition to my already achieved uh, subscriber count of over 1,000, in fact, we're nearing 1,500 now. Hi guys. Um, so yeah, I've got my 4,000 hours, and so I received an alert yesterday that I could apply for the partner program, which I did. And lo and behold, like within, oh, 12 hours, not much more than 12 hours, um, I had the option to uh, monetize all my videos, which I've done. So here we are. I started this channel uh, in 2015, actually, like five years ago. And um, early on, I think it was my second video that I put up, my printing, matting and framing photographs to archival standards went uh, a little bit, relatively speaking, viral. And I was making a few bucks, but then along came Adpocalypse. And uh, I'm not gonna go into all that, you can look it up. But um, that's when they brought in these prerequisites of uh, a thousand sub minimum 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 uh, hours watch time in uh, a 365 one-year period. So, um, yeah, so <laughs> this channel got demonetized. And that was, um, well, I kind of threw in the towel. I was kind of peed off about that. And I didn't upload much for a couple of years. But then I decided, let's give it a go. Those of you who've uh, been here before may have seen my video even two months ago when my watch hours were going in the wrong direction, dropping off because of um, a couple of viral videos a year before that last year. And I truly considered uh, giving this up, but I'm still here. I'm not a quitter, as I said in another video. And um, so, yeah, here we are all monetized. The other thing I wanted to uh, do today is I wanted to go back and once again, look at if the Nikon Z6 was a viable vlogging camera. And I visited this before briefly, but the last time, the rig that I set up, I had a Rode video mic on top of the camera and I was recording into an external recorder. It was quite a rig to drag around. Since that time, I have bought the Rode Wireless Go system. So today, wait for this truck to go by. Okay, forget that last location. Yeah, I was just uh, way too busy. So we've driven out into the boonies here to get some peace and quiet other than the robins that are uh, serenading us. So uh, where was I? I was talking about the video rig that I've set up now, hopefully as an improvement uh, on my last experiment. So I was saying, I think that uh, I'm now using the uh, Rode Wireless Go system to, um, so I've got the Rode uh, Lavalier Go mic, which is into the transmitter and the receiver is mounted on the camera using a little cold mount attached to the small rig L bracket. And that's going directly into the camera. And I think that you know, that's going to give us, uh, in fact, I've done some tests, so I'm quite confident that, you know, it's going to be pretty good, at least for, uh, for vlogging. And if I want to, I can take that into uh, post-production and do a little bit of tweaking on the audio. And why, why go to even that trouble? Why not just use the built-in mic in the camera? Well, you really can't rely on that mic, A, for quality, and certainly uh, if you've got any wind issues, as um, is quite often the case, uh, you're going to have wind noise. So you can see I've got the little what I call the dead caterpillar here on the lav mic. It's not windy right now, but um, that would obviously improve things over the built-in mic on the camera. And I've turned the uh, camera gain down to uh, just plus five. And on the Rode transmitter, I've turned the gain up on that to um, to its high, highest level. So in theory, that should uh, quieten down any noise from the camera's preamps and um, uh, maximize the quality of anything that we can get out of this as far as audio goes. So is this Z6 a viable vlogging camera? Much of that, I guess, depends on the stabilization, five axis 
uh, vibration reduction, stabilization that uh, this camera boasts. And my past experience has been that it's not too bad. And the other part is <laughs> that it's still not the lightest camera, not uh, as light, say, as the Nikon Z50, a much smaller camera that's uh, advertised as a vlogging camera. And that has a flip down screen. That camera certainly is a viable vlogging camera. I think that's pretty plain. And if you have the plate that's made by small rig, that will offset the camera. So if you have that on a, well, I have this on my monopod, that you can still see the flip down screen. So, I mean, I'll leave it up to you. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the stabilization on this as I walk. The other issue is that I'm just three weeks out from major surgery. So I'm pretty weak, uh, particularly my arm. And I've spent the, most of the last three weeks in bed uh, trying to recover. Here we are in the month of the setting of the native salal berries, the flowering of the native stone crop, and the invasive scotch broom. That really is a real bane of this whole island. It just gets in there anywhere there's an opening and spreads like crazy. Oh, and we've got some salmon berries setting as well. Nice. I'm using the Nikkor Z mount, a 14 to 30 F4 lens that I've used before. And I have it set at about 24 millimeters. Uh, 20 to 24 millimeters, I think, is just fine for vlogging and pretty much assures that my face is going to be uh, somewhere in the frame. But as I said, you know, something like the Z50 might do a better job. I could always, I suppose, <laughs> put my Atomos Ninja 5 on here, but at a weight penalty, of course. And on the front of the lens, I've got the Nissi V6 filter holder mounted. And right now I'm running a three-stop ND filter. I've got the whole rig mounted on my Gitzo carbon fiber monopod and I have it fully extended. So that kind of uh, gives it a little bit of a gimbal effect with a, some, a little bit of a weight down there. And it also works nicely when I want to stop, set it down and talk to you uh, stationary. And I can, of course, also do a little bit of a pan and somehow this fell into my car <laughs> on my way home from uh, my medical appointment. I don't know how it happened, but uh, rest assured you'll be hearing more and seeing more from this lens in upcoming videos. And wouldn't you know it, I got home and excitedly unpacked uh, the lens, of course, and checked my computer, and lo and behold, Nikon announced some new lenses. First of all, their uh, macro lenses, which would be uh, the 50 millimeter and the 105 millimeter 2.8. And that is a lens that I've been waiting for. I was actually holding off on this lens <laughs> because I really would like to get my hands on a 105 because the 105 is one of my favorite focal lengths particularly for portraiture. I've never really owned a macro, or as Nikon calls them, micro lens, a true uh, macro lens. So yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna be doing some liquidation to get my hands on one of those. There is rumors that the next lenses will be their pancake lenses, and I think that's a 28 and a 40. Those I think will be released soon. I'm not so much interested in those though. They could be a great lens for, uh, for travel. You can go to uh, Nikon's website now and read about these new micro macro lenses. Your vision beyond the ordinary, all around tiny unseen worlds, textures, shapes, colors, micro details, and so on. So the 105 uh, 2.8 VRS, and this is the other thing. They are VR lenses, vibration reduction. So, um, you know, you should be able to handhold those lenses uh, even while doing uh, macro photography. Although I'd be inclined to use a tripod nonetheless if I was really trying to maximize the effect. Going on the S-line lenses, you're looking through one right now, the uh, 14 to 30. We can be pretty confident that these are going to be beautiful lenses. Oh, the other thing that I should say is that uh, the 105 has been my favorite lens for portraits. 
and there's no reason why this lens can't the 105 can't be used for portrait. Nikon is boasting about that fact here by saying that it doubles as a superb portrait lens. Its 105 millimeter mid telephoto focal length is in the sweet spot for portrait work. Its f2.8 maximum aperture lets you separate your subject from a softly blurred background and its five axis image stabilization when used with a compatible Z series camera is ideal for in the moment handheld shooting. And these lenses are going to have all the wonderful coatings that uh, we've been enjoying, as I said, with the existing S-line lenses, Arneo coating, fluorine coating. And, and the other thing is uh, the stepping motor motors are, are very, very quiet. So for video, they're awesome. Um, electromagnetic diaphragm mechanism um, in the lens barrel provides highly accurate electronic diaphragm or aperture blade control when using auto exposure during continuous shooting. And the ED extra low dispersion glass, as I say, coatings, nano crystal coatings. It's an aspherical lens. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the detail uh, about the virtues of aspherical lenses, but you can look that up. They make for a lighter lens, and, and again, these lenses are going to have uh, inbuilt lens corrections, which we're used to with the existing Z mount lenses. So I won't go into more detail on these. As I said, you can check it all out on Nikon's website where there's much more detail. So if you found this video uh, interesting, please give it a thumbs up. And if uh, what I've discussed there uh, sounds like something you'd be interested in finding out more about, including this uh, amazing lens, uh, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and uh, Take care of yourselves. Cheers. We'll see you later. It's great to see you. Um, for this um, monetizing, vlogging, um, traffic going by, and all kinds of other shit like that.